Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Brandon, and today I want to show you how we can interact with graphical applications remotely via X11 forwarding. If you're not familiar with X, essentially it is a window management system that's used to do a lot of the lower level operations for your desktop environments in Linux, such as your GNOME or KDE desktops. And what we can do is, is forward that X11 traffic from our server to our client, which will enable us to interact with these graphical applications remotely without the need to set up some overhead of like a VNC server or things like that. So to get started, we want to enable X11 forwarding on the machine that we're actually going to be running the graphical application on, so our server. In this case, I'm just running an Ubuntu virtual machine. Now this is going to be configured in the SSH configuration file. So what we can do is do sudo vim slash etsy slash SSH slash SSHD uh, underscore config. And once you open this up, we're going to see a line in here that says X11 forwarding. It could be commented out. Uh, and if you don't see this line in here, you can just go ahead and add it yourself. But essentially, we need the line in here that says X11 forwarding and set to yes. Now we can just save and quit. And then now we need to actually restart that SSH service. So we can do sudo service SSHD restart. Once we do that, we're going to uh, enforce that change for X11 forwarding to be allowed on our server side. And now we should be able to access these remote applications from our client. So let's hop over to another uh, Linux machine I have. This one is just a Kali machine. So once we log into here, we should be able to SSH into our Ubuntu server and access those graphical applications remotely via X11 forwarding. Now, this is very simple to do. Uh, it's just done via SSH. So we can do SSH conda at we'll say 192.168.1.241. And then we need to specify the dash capital X flag for X11 forwarding. Now, once we do that, we can just SSH in as normal and you'll get your normal SSH, you know, prompts and logins and things like that. It's going to look like nothing different is happening. But for example, if we try to use programs that support X11 forwarding, like for example, gedit, once you open gedit up, you can see we are given this graphical environment. But if we go to save this file, you can see that this is actually the file system of the Ubuntu server. Because this graphical application is running on the Ubuntu server, we are simply viewing that forwarded session over SSH on our remote Linux instance. So that is how we can use X11 forwarding to access graphical applications between two Linux machines. Let's take a look at how it works for Windows. So let's pop over to this Windows machine that I have here. We're going to need two things for this. You're going to need to have PuTTY installed, which you can find at this link here. And we're going to need to install Xming, which you can find at this link here. I'll drop both of those links down below in the description so you don't have to go searching for them. So the first we need to do is actually install PuTTY, which is going to be our SSH client for Windows. So I've already uh, downloaded this. So let's just go through the installation. You can essentially just next all the way through this. Uh, I'd assume a lot of you probably already have PuTTY installed as it's a very common program. Now, the next thing we need to install, which is, is Xming, which is an X server that we can run on Windows. We need to run this X server on Windows so that we can actually forward that X traffic from our Linux server to our Windows machine because X doesn't come natively on Windows. So let's go through and install Xming right here. This doesn't take very long at all. It's another installation that you can pretty much just go ahead and next through. Um, so we should go through and just install all of these things. You can create the shortcuts for, on your desktop if you'd like to, but of course, that's not necessary. And now that that is finished installing, it's going to prompt us to launch Xming, which we will just go ahead and click finish and it should launch right up. Now, what we actually want to go ahead and search for in our search bar is X launch. So once we search that, this is going to be uh, the, the program that we're going to be using to start the actual X server. So we can just go ahead and select this multiple windows and then hit next. And uh, we'll go ahead and select start no client and hit next again. If you want to, you can enable this to share the clipboard between your forwarded X session and your desktop, but you don't, you don't have to do that, of course. So go ahead and hit next and then go ahead and hit finish. So now we should have the X server running on our local Windows machine. And now if we open up PuTTY, this should allow us to SSH into our Linux server with X11 forwarding. So let's go into this SSH tab here and let's open up this little drop down and go to the X11 tab. Now you're going to want to check this box here that says enable X11 forwarding and also make sure this radio button is checked here for MIT Magic Cookie 1. Now let's go back up to our session and let's type in the um, username at the IP address we want to connect to. So 192.168.1.241 and then go ahead and hit open. Now it's going to be prompted for password, of course, just like usual. So now that we have successfully SSH into our remote Linux server from our Windows machine with X11 forwarding enabled in PuTTY, we should be able to launch these graphical applications. And if they support X11 forwarding, 
then that graphical application should be sent to our Xming server that's now running on Windows. So now, for example, if we type in gedit, it should pop up the gedit program. Now, you'll notice that there are a bit more delays if you're doing X11 forwarding on Windows than on Linux, but you can see we have been given the gedit graphical application. And if we go ahead and hit open, you know, in documents or whatever, you can see that this is actually, you know, the, of course, the file system of the Linux server and not the Windows machine because this program is actually executing on the Linux server, not on our Windows host. We're just seeing the graphical environment. So that is how you can configure X11 forwarding on a Linux server for both a Linux and a Windows client. I hope that you found this video useful. If you did, please remember to like and subscribe down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.